Hello everyone, and welcome back. I know it's been a while, but I thought today Phil and I could maybe have a more general discussion with you guys, and maybe jump site to site. We had the idea that maybe we could talk about sites in the Far East, and maybe work our way towards the West, and not really focus on any specific hallmark, but just see what we can observe, and maybe the connections we can make on the fly. So, Phil, how are you doing today? It's good to see you. Yeah, very well. Pleased to be with you again, Andrew, mate. Yeah. It's... Uh, look at the hallmarks. We've uh, produced the technological Alexandria, which is reference to the worldwide engineering phenomenon that is the notes book. There are plenty more hallmarks that we can discuss, and we do with the team as well. So it'd be nice to show everybody exactly what we do day to day and just have a little bit of a chat and a jump from site to site and as you say we're going to go from east to west maybe sort of follow the silk road or new yeah. road as you might like to call it and have a look at the temples from sort of china to maybe greece macedonia to the acropolis sort of style it's like this might go over to the shows but hello to everyone watching and thanks for keeping up with Ancient History Criticism, Andrew, and myself, Phil, and the Ancient Alternative View. Thanks yeah. very much for coming to speak to us. So, yeah, I anyway, we we'll start across. I think we were chatting before we came on about some of the hallmarks that we've found in China, and it isn't just Yangshan that people talk about. You've got the Longyi Cave there, you've got the pyramids there. Mm -hmm. You've also got what I researched is the Empress Castle. Ah, yes. Stands out with some of like the hallmarks that we find at, say, Baalbek. You've got the shell hallmark, which we look at as a Venus hallmark. And, you know, people don't look at this as a hallmark. You'd look at that and you'd think we're in Greece, but we're not. We're actually over in China. Right, yeah. The, the quality of the work, the, the finish, yeah, it really does look Greco Roman. Almost very ornate as well, isn't it, Andrew? It's not like it was sort of like a, a quarried site, like what Yang Shan is. It's not like that at all. No, and no. you see almost a very ornate work here in comparison to the megalithic mud work that you see at Yang Shan, almost like two different eras of building, if you like. But Could be. You see blocks in the background that have kind of a lip to them. You know, maybe are those lips blocks like we see over in the Greco-Roman areas, you know, could be. You see the same kind of incising and the, the different uh, mitered edges and, and trim elements. And some of the same tool marks. that pattern of lip stone in the background as well, right? Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. Maybe we tend to find that in quite a lot of areas, don't we, Andrew? That's right. And maybe some of these uh, these tool marks as well. Yeah, I mean, you can see this, the, the bevel edge, the kind of pitted middles on some of these blocks. That's familiar to us. See that over here as well, right? So when you look at Absolutely. some of the Greco-Roman sites, I know we talked about Sardis uh, on Twitter earlier today uh, in Turkey, has that same kind of, you know, interior effect going on versus the... I mean, with the pitted middles, you kind of get that on a lot of the bevel block sites, don't you? The very That's right. fine, smooth, outside line with the pitted middles. And then you get almost, I mean, we'll talk about this a bit later, like the Kirk and the Kirsch with a very puffy ah, yeah. middle of bevel blocks. Good one. Well, bring that the Kirk and the Kirsch is fascinating. So. Agreed. Yeah, there is a little bit more ornamentation going on here. Like I said, we don't see any kind of embellishment or ornamentation at Yangshan. You know, this is almost the antithesis. This is very ornate and showy, you know, Greco-Roman austere. It has a little bit of an Indian flair too, right? Some of this, the curves and some of the shapes, they almost yeah, echo India a little bit. Uh, it's definitely ornate with like, the Indian definitely. architecture that we see. Mm -hmm. Certainly not plain like you would maybe find in certain areas of South America. They were very, very flamboyant with the architectural design that they had yeah. in China at this specific site. Agreed. Not too many photos. We won't see too many photos of, of the sites in China just because th there hasn't been that much documentation, honestly. There, there, we have... Um, What's a good one, Phil? We have Chosen Observatory. I like this one. Yeah. So we have, let's get us back in the frame here. 
So this site is essentially a giant pillbox or some kind of stone igloo, I don't know, a container of some kind, right? It looks like an industrial, like they were keeping something important here. It does look industrial. What fascinates me is there's one or two different wall marks on it. Yes. It's got this big, massive T-shaped door. We find that in South America mm -hmm. most definitely. Mm -hmm. You've almost got what looks like a huge keystone at the top left-hand corner that maybe would have yeah. helped hold it together, almost like your famous pinch holes, but yeah. not quite like that. Almost feels like a keystone marker. It's got that hourglass shape. Holding that top part of the block together. Right. And I remember you talking to me about the relation to the lozenge style, maybe scrape pattern for want of a better word, to the left. Yes, this the repeating. I assume these are tool marks, right? They're, they're some kind of pattern of scrapes and tool marks. And we might see that later. We'll, we'll bring up a comparison to Baalbek uh, and maybe some other I places. Quite, I, quite, I, find, I find it fascinating on the door of the T shape to the right. Mm -hmm. Why would you have that protrusion line unless something fit almost directly, well, not square, but T-shaped and square within yeah. that door itself? Yeah. Was there something hung as a doorway or was that completely enclosed? Yeah. It would be fascinating if it was an actual box that contained something in its entirety. What would you keep in there? Yeah, good question. I mean, was there a lintel missing maybe? Is it, was the door smaller and we were missing a, a lintel? Or, yeah, like you say, is there some kind of hinge and locking elements that we're not seeing? Again, there's not many good photos. I can go back here, but we don't, oh, sorry. We don't have, but maybe, yeah, three photos. They're not the best quality. You can see the scratches on this one again. That's pretty much it. You, a little bit of a gap in the back, so the, the roof is a little rough, or maybe it's it's been shifted, so it's not as tightly fitted together as it used to be, or this was the original fitment, and it was just, Roughly thrown together, but yeah, green begs a question. I begs get a question. Block up there. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah if it is indeed. one bit, I mean, I'm pretty sure this might at least be one or two slabs, right? This, these, these other wall blocks are pretty big. So is the ceiling slab just as big? I have to say, looks like it. I think I have just one other angle. Oh, yeah. You see, see, guys, yes. these these photos are not good. Like this is if you go if you Google. Chosen Observatory, you're going to get these. This is it. I mean, if you can find any more, please let us know. But we're dealing yeah, with... Feel free to send them to us on uh, ancient underscore view Twitter. Mm -hmm. You'll find our team there mm -hmm. uh, with myself and Andrew, Dave and Biggie and all the team that's on all of our Twitter posts that we mention frequently on our channels that have got equally as good photos and knowledge as what we have right. as a specialist in there. So-called um, specific areas of hallmark research, but yeah. Andrew's got here almost like again, it's like a keystone marker, isn't it? I agree. Like, uh, how it would have been held together on the corner. Yeah, I wish it, I could get better quality and maybe see the lower areas if there was other clamps on the bottom, but this is all we have. I mean, that that one photo. Nice if we could have somebody send us a photo from there up close and personal on that. Yeah, this is That's the best about one. the finest photo you can find of it, isn't it? Yeah, and you notice the scratches on the right side, they're in rows, parallel rows, yeah. versus the left side, which is this diagonal uh, cross-hatching. So it's odd that they, they you know, I, again, we, we're speculating on bad quality. It's hard to say, are the original marks, are they later marks, you know, is there more detail, is there more going on with them? Could be, but this almost is almost like an enormous dolmen, isn't it? It That's does, it. yeah. It does feel like a big dolmen. Has that dolmen sort of feel to it? And like we saw at Karnak many moons ago, the dolmens have actually got nubs on them. I'll bring the nubs up there. Yes. We're not seeing them in this specific instance. Some of them do. Makes you wonder why some of the sites like Yangsha, um, we see nubs in those quarries, but where did the rest of Yangshan go? Let's go over to Yangshan because that's a great segue because Yangshan, uh, like the antithesis of the Summer Palace, this place is completely stark. We have no ornamentation, decoration. It's just blank, 
The only thing you could say might that, that might be cultural or you know esoteric are these little altars or shelves underneath one of the models. Yeah, those shelves very much like Zonex. Yes, in you Peru. You get that feel mm -hmm. of Zonex. And for those of you that don't know, that's the South America. Yes, in Peru so, there's some of these. And, and different yeah. altars. Uh, even even the one on uh, Lake Titicaca that looks like the uh, condor that's got the different color in it, the darker on top. Looks like it got struck by lightning or something. You know, some of those little altar shapes and, and block shapes are reminiscent of these. But that's it. Other Other than that, most of the stuff here is just um, it's just industrial, like uh, like a mining operation, right? And like yeah, like you were saying, where did the rest of it go? Well, we have a, we have something to talk about here. So this is one of the blocks. There's there's three big worked megaliths or monoliths because they're all still basically attached to the bedrock. This monolith is off by itself. And what's going on over here, Phil? We have an entire quarried out section that's devoid of any blocks, and then the one that's left is partially uh, released. I mean, it almost... It, I look at this like I look at the unfinished obelisk in Egypt. I also look at it mm -hmm. a little bit like the Trilithon stones at Baalbek, so-called, that haven't been moved or were aligned in the position that they were in. Now, with this right. stone here, people don't realise just how much tonnage is Oh, it's down, massive, down. right? Yeah, Thirty-two and a half thousand metric ton uh, for the entire lot, sixteen and a half thousand for the middle lot. Now that end one is far bigger, so you know it's absolutely enormous. Look at the size comparison yeah. to a man, and that was going to be attempted to be moved because we can tell that because the rest of the quarry was moved. So where is it, number one? Where is the rest? Mm -hmm. I mean, that's such a massive question for any researcher. Mm -hmm. The mineralogy of that stone, um, it's so called written in mainstream history that the emperor wanted it moved over, I think it was about nine miles. <laughs> now, how on earth would that have been moved? And if you look at the emperor's sort of dragon statue that he made, it was nine tons. Mm -hmm. Now, these were far outweighed what he wanted moved over that amount mm -hmm. that's written in mainstream history. So it begs the point, where is the stone from the Amjang Quarry? What did it make? Where did it go? Mm -hmm. you know. And you can see in this angle, the, the yeah. vertical you know, scoring marks, scoop marks, chisel marks, they're also in the back. In, in the well, Almost like the scrape marks. Scrape marks. We see on a more finer ornate level in India. That's right. Uh, we see them at Warangal. Seen them at different areas around the world, actually. Egypt's a very good one. That's you true. You see them at scrape marks. You see them at different water tide level marks, don't you? Just underneath it, mm -hmm. around the Cleopatra Temple and so on and so forth. But yes, right. Yeah, good point. I mean, some of these. A good point, a good point with the middle monolith, should we say? Yes, go ahead. I mean, I like Dave and Ziggy Dan's opinion of this, where it turned upside down very much. Looks like star alignment constellation to us. But Rob Heavily, also a team member, has looked at whether some of these could be plasticized and could have been added on maybe a little bit later on. Oh. Now, mineralogy would need to be looked at with regards to that, but he has a valid point. But if you were ever going to an I, you know me and my thoughts on lifting them. Mm -hmm. There's right. nothing comparable. We could lift these, not to say that Rob and say that as an idea. No, no. But he was looking at the mineralogies of the stone. It's not conducive to lifting because of the, obviously the angle of underneath them, or they would just, anything that you attach to it would just slip off. Agreed. So Agreed. why are they there? Mm -hmm. You know, the uh, biggest right. question that me and you ask all the time. See the you can see scoring. the straight part, the picket middle. Right, oh, almost like a technology setting. Different kind of scrapes, but yeah, they, they they kind of follow in a pattern. Some and like in in the nub example, they almost like focus towards the nub. You see that, guys? They have this even striation that kind of ra has a radius around the nub itself. That's wild. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I really like that photo. That's that's one of the better quality ones we have. Sorry, this my, our folder. We've got so many photos. It kind of it's going slow, so I'm double clicking here. 
Um, we okay, we're going to get back here. We were going to switch over to the longer monolith, the one that looks like an unfinished obelisk. And this one's very curious because it's about, you know, 90% finished. They've got the entire shape squared off, but they've left both sides connected to the bedrock. Why would you do it that way? And then with those altars underneath, why would you leave those underneath? They're going to get destroyed when you go to move this. Thanks a point as well. Why would you not have an array of nooks of a larger, say, unfinished? Great point. Larger megalith than you have on the smaller one. Great point. Why are they only on the you older know, one? Yeah. It takes away that old lifting theory away from nooks because yeah. if you needed them, you'd have them on the larger ones, wouldn't you? You would. I mean, this is a very large, the oval monolith is very large in and of itself. So if they were getting ready to move 16, that thing. 16,000 tons plus. There you go. That big old. So if, it's, if that's ready to go and be moved by those nubs, then they were planning on, you know, lifting something of that size. So the, this is within their realm if that's the scenario, but I don't think that's the scenario. I think these are for a different purpose, obviously. I completely agree with that. I completely agree with that. Let's see, what else do I have? The uh, lower, I mean, these these surfaces are flat too, right? That that, that is a flat surface. This the I think it's quite interesting. With I call it the mineralogy that runs through the center of it. You've got almost the gray stone and yeah. the white. What it's not just was that specific to them when they're mining. Yeah. For what was within the stone content? Could be. Yeah. I mean, it's not just staining. I mean, you might think that, but there's other areas where it goes around corners and. It's obviously a grain or a mineralogy change in the Like stomach. a vein, it could be like a, a vein. quartz vein or something along that line. Yeah, know? sure, yeah. So that that could be a reason why the site was important. We have other uh, photo. Ah, it's a terrible photo, but you can see the the grain, the mineralogy change, the color variations and stuff too. Yeah, good point. And those altars again. I mean, it's just it's one. It's weird that they're under there. And some of these other aspects are on the corners. They've been like they got real close, but they stopped. Why did they stop so abruptly? One of my subscribers, I mentioned this on a separate video of my own, uh, Lynn Mitty, good friend of yes, uh, Lost History Channel. Yes, she says, Why can't they be the nooks for that part of the larger monolith? And I said, Well, they could be, That's I'm a not 100% sure how to quantify these. Be quite honest with you, Andrew. They, yeah, yeah. You call them altars. Yeah. Um, I honestly don't know, and I'll hold my hands up what to say they actually are. They're not nubs that we call them, but they're certainly left there for a purpose. If you imagine a glass front mm -hmm. across that, it's almost like you're walking through a museum. Like a display at, case. Oh, this was that, this was this. Could be, but, yeah. What was set up here? What are we missing? Were there elements? that were installed in there that are not there today. Sure. I mean, that's valid. Well, yeah, that begs the point, doesn't it? Valid question. Yeah, yeah. And, and and maybe some of these other just simple square ones, maybe those are made the same way as nubs. Who knows? There's another place that we looked at, Andrew, when we first found uh, the quarry sites in mm -hmm. Jam Shan. We looked at the middle Megalith. Mm -hmm. And I always remember you saying to me, have you seen Sulawasi? Have you seen the... Ah, yeah. Nubs at Sulawati. Mm -hmm. And I hadn't at the time when I was doing my China work. And we moved across to Indonesia. Mm -hmm. And we had a little look, didn't we, at what we could find in Indonesia. Yeah. And lo and behold, there's a very similar megalith. This is bedrock as well. Yes. yes. And it's got definite nubs on the outside of it, the external side of it. Very similar, it's got that mineralogy concept that runs through the middle of it as mm -hmm. well. Mm -hmm. Now, there's not many great photos of this. No, This is a fantastic one, to be honest. Probably the not best. Many. Yeah, probably the best one. Yeah, and to be able to actually document the nubs to see whether any star alignment could be involved with this, people laugh and shun at that comment. Well, unfortunately, it has to be looked at variation towards what they consider. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Where the square holes added afterward. Yeah. The square holes, exactly. Because not only do we see these in Indonesia, these these square cutouts in the bedrock are all over the place. They're in China. They're in Japan. They're they're even you know in Iran and in South America even. So that's yeah. A, they are. They are. We've got some good examples of those. Yeah. Before square we get holes, it's almost like I don't know. They were using mining and they were trying to get in and then maybe use them as small houses for the operations they were using nearby. Yeah. How deep do some of the some of them go? they some of them are, are blocked up and boarded over. Now in Sulawesi they use them for funerals. These are actually sometimes real people. Either these are, you know, dolls and, and effigies. Other times they're real mummies put into these. They are, yeah. So in some instances they're brought down every year, redressed and that's right. put back up into the walls. That's right. So let's look. This is Indonesia, right? We have just a couple examples there. That's that's really it. And then we'll go back to China real quick, and we'll look. Which one was it? Was it the Longmen Grottoes? Yes. Again, lots of niches. Very similar, isn't it? And cutouts in the bedrock. Very similar. So this yeah. is more extensive, right? And yeah, maybe there's deep caverns, and this is a settlement or a quarry, mining the facility, something like that. Yeah, I, I think that's what we're looking at. I mean, it almost could be like a test to where, say, you look on the new road still through the Elora uh, road at the Elora Cave, the Barga Cave. Yeah. Uh, so on. Like they were doing test holes to see whether they could put a very ornate temple where these are, because you get very similar looking cave entrances, square holes, no matter what you look at them as, mm. along these cave systems all across the culture. That's right. <laughs> even in the, what Afghanistan, where the giant Buddha is. I mean, I even showed you. Look at Jordan as well, like Petra. Petra has very is, similar sort of the old style above where. You've got the auditorium and so on and so forth. The yeah, amphibies. big square holes, right? Or just, you know, yeah, niches. Yeah, agreed. And, and you know, still on the eastern side here, th this is China, but we'll jump over to the island of Japan, and we have more of these. And some of them... That has exactly the same thing there. Some of them are controversial because I've found some that they say might be, you know, turn-of-the-century mining tunnels and holes and stuff by the coast not sure on some of these there's not much information maybe they're more recent but then they have these the hundred caves these are supposed to be ancient so again we have this you know cluster beehive of of holes and niches into the bedrock again absolutely almost like test holes mm -hmm. they look very much like test holes it'd be interesting to see how deep how far back yeah. some of these actually go. Sardinia has some of these that look like this. The the very simple trapezoidal with a little incised entryway. So even on islands in Sardinia. And then again, another island. Maybe is there something to do with islands that, you know, the mineralogy of what was on the island or maybe just for the defensive nature of an island? Aspect, yeah. Yeah, yeah, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, the, we're still on the eastern side here and we have lots more to look at. First, while we're here in Japan, we have boxes with nubs, which will be probably my Pandora's box episode three. We'll talk about the nub boxes in Japan and in the, you know, the, the islands of Java have them. Uh, what was it? Um, Palau has some. I mean, there, there's Palau's got them, yeah. Yeah, so we. You've, you've, you've also got examples that look very similar to that in Egypt as yes, well. Yes, yeah. So that'll be a whole episode that we'll have to talk about because. All these Kofuns guys, all these big uh, megalithic uh, tombs, a lot of them have these. So, while so we're it's here, the square nature there of the nubs on that box. Versus, yeah, the, versus the round Some Egyptian ones and uh, ones in Turkey, we get semicircular standardized and we get also the triangular style as well. Yeah. Very, very, very different boxes, but with the same engineer. Yeah. And we'll look at more examples. I've got those in a whole nother folder. You know, I've, I've organized the boxes into their own folder and then by country. So we'll, we'll make a whole episode about those. Um, in the meantime, still, we have other big things to talk about here in Japan before we move on. You know, of course, a lot of people know about the castle walls that with the big blocks in them. 
that's one aspect. Then we have big strange objects, the rock ship of Masuda. This is strange to, to me and I'm sure a lot of other people. Yeah, absolutely. Very precision. It makes you wonder whether it's actually positioned the right way around when you study it properly, doesn't it? Yeah, it's very precision cut, but it's just plonked right in the middle of the woods. So what's it doing here? What was its purpose? There's a lot of questions with this. Again, can't find many photos. We've tried to find all of them. We have a few angles that not many people will find from above. This is a great angle. You can see the niches. You know, yeah. what were they originally for? Were they meant to so be thrown apart? It was very cut, wasn't it? Looks like it, yeah. So to be where it is, it's very strange, number one. Mm -hmm. Was it moved there? And if so, how? Mm -hmm. Would be a great question. Yeah. I like on the one side of it, on the photo that you've got, that yeah. you've almost got very smooth edge. Yeah. And then underneath yeah. it, you've got like a very square aspect of it. I mean, mm -hmm. some cases we've talked about with these attempts at maybe technology that yeah. flattened the stone mm -hmm. and they were testing technology against it. Yeah. I mean, that could be laughed at in this instance, but it does show the flattening of stone that's moved. Yeah. So, sorry to it, and then the very squared, I don't like to say nub, but more nub square Some sort of, of aspect are. to it. Yeah. Because it does look like that to a degree if you look up close to it. Certain areas, yeah. I mean, the, of course, it's just, a, you could yeah explain it away as maybe just a the carving technique is just cu making cubes, and you know, but it, it doesn't really fit, right? Because it's such a drastic change from smooth, to the grooved areas. It's just so abrupt. Yeah, absolutely agree. Yeah. And if you didn't need that, why do it? Right. It's obviously showing you something. Yeah, I think it's meant you to know. show you, right? Yeah. Meant to be kind of unfinished or however you want to describe it. Some good stuff there. I mean, it's it's hard to find the excavated photos, the, the bamboo grows back, but I mean, it's a pretty big piece. How, Very big, yeah. Is it attached to the bedrock? Is it just a giant boulder? You know, that's a good question. No one's dug down that far. And some of this over here, this cubing, looks a lot like uh, some sites in India that are bedrock cut have the same kind of technique going on. It does, on. yeah. It's almost like it's been marked out. Mm hmm. Yeah. To be cut. Delineated to be cut later or just, yeah, roughly outlined. Agreed. Yeah. Good, good object. And then near that, we also have Ichi no Hoden, which is another very curious object. What is this thing? I mean, the same kind of thing going on as Yangshan, right? We have a big quarried out area to make this. This wasn't just, you know... It's almost like it's hung in midair, isn't it? That's, that, it's like an optical illusion. Yeah, was that the intended uh, optical effect to make it look like it's floating? Because it's it's effective. Absolutely. Yeah, and it begs the question. The nubs, I, I, I call it a nub. I know it's we'll go back. not exactly the always kind of nub, but this thing. That reminds me of the side of Yang Shan. It's just the shape. Yeah. You know, the angle is at the bottom of it. Right. That angle. Very much reminds me of the side of the big middle megalith. Just a really monolith. nicely, you know, finely crafted nub. Yeah. It, it is, yeah. It is, definitely. I mean, what is that actually showing you? Yeah. No one's ever given us this is any it... insight into what that could be. Yeah. Could it have been the top of a column? At one point in time. It looks sideways, doesn't it? It looks like it should be turned over. Mm -hmm, I agree. It does look like it should be turned over. Yeah. yeah. And at one point that I've made view about this, where the water is, you know where we see it, the Assyrian, you've yes. got the water level. Yeah. It would be very interesting to see if that water was drained, yeah. whether you've got lower baseline nubs within the area. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the water, I mean, it's got this pool, I mean, Maybe in earlier times, like maybe like with the Osirion and other places, the water level fluctuated, and maybe that was the, the full mark, letting you know a time of year or other information. Yeah, I mean, the back part of it there almost looks like similar to Yang Chan, like that's been quarried mm -hmm. to that point, like it is a monolith that was left there to show what was done around the outside with... Okay. Maybe I hate to say it again, but the technological marks on the side, the flattening, yeah. squared, yeah, the, so on, the one recess quarried around the side. That is just like the rock ship of Masuda. It has that recessed, planed back precision cut. Agreed. Yeah, agreed. And you have these other scratches. And now, you see the tech marks at the top there? Yeah. Almost like you see 
in Volta Tango, you see those in Russia and Asia on the mountain side. Yeah. It's almost like Okay, starting back again, sorry for the break. Uh Phil, you were just talking about how some of this this uh scoring and grooving kind of looks like Gornia Shoria in Russia. Yeah. And I yeah, you can no, you can notice that it's not just in the block itself, it's in the bedrock in the background. So is this evidence traces of the carving method that we're seeing? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you see the what people refer to as the snake, don't you, on a day dambo. And yeah. I refer to it as one of those marks. Could very well like be. Like I do at Gorda, Sharia. It's almost like they were testing tech against the stove. Yeah. For want of a better word. Mm -hmm. And that, that big incisement again i have a better angle of that you can yeah, see that big incisement is a prominent cut isn't it it's just like the the rock ship of masuda has the exact same cut on the top but yeah, just with yeah. two big you know deeper cuts basins or whatever we were calling those but yeah the, it screams out to me that it's the wrong way around that it needs to be turned it really does back yeah. on its head like it's almost mm -hmm. fallen over on its side yeah Really good quality on some of these, though. We have some really good photos. The 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 mitered edge along the rim, and that's just that nub is. I mean, I I will call that a nub. That that it has that same angled profile as the Yangshan ones. It's just it, it, different expression. If we are calling that a nub, then it's got to be the biggest nub in the world so far. I'm pretty sure that but is. But it does stand out like the Yangshan middle monolith, doesn't it? Does it does? Yeah. The, same the, angle. It's the same. Fusion. Just a little it's bit more. Exactly the same. But you you mm. would not put a massive rope under that and attempt to lift it. No. That would be ridiculous. I don't think that's how they were going to do it. And I need to see more of this quarry and where they were planning on transporting this and how that was getting out of here. I don't I don't see it happening though. Yeah. It's 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 literally down here in this little niche. It was meant to stay here, I think. But be nice to get photos underneath that little niche. That's the thing, right? Because we really don't really get know. Photos of what's going on under there. We don't know what's going on under there. Yeah. So is is it really still connected? Like maybe at Yangshan, or is it just sitting there? And maybe it was intended to be moved. I mean, it really it's hard to say. But I don't see it going anywhere, and unless up and out. But that's a whole another thing, isn't it? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Well, we can we can go on with the uh, the topic of the niches some more because I really like that vein of, of thought because like we we're saying we have this this uh this phenomenon of Maybe niches. We touched on Petra, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We touched on Petra and beyond the amphitheater, some of the square perfectly cut well say perfectly cut. Yeah, let's go with niches that. beyond Petra. We'll go to that one real quick. I think I have that one. If I don't I will stop and find it. Because we do have other other things that aren't just um facades here we, we that's something phil and i noticed you know early on when we saw some high quality photos we go oh they're not all decorated facades some of them are just blank square and rectangular cutouts so I mean, my image brings a completely new hallmark into the equation it's got the incised motif all over it which was mm -hmm. in palmyra which is here it's in south america mm -hmm. it's absolutely everywhere we find it on a lot of south american Pottery from the Magollan all the way through um, to Petra, Jordan, mm -hmm. uh, Turkey. A lot of them Zoroastrian so, yeah, uh, lot of quality that. work as well. Agreed. I mean, the Zoroastrian cut mountain is mm -hmm. something else, isn't it? Mm -hmm. but, um, showing tech that cuts straight through the Zoroastrian architecture. Mm -hmm. But here, a lot like Petra, this. there's different areas. It's got to be because. They've got the trapezoidal doors, you've got the incised motif, mm -hmm. they've got, like we've seen further across to the east, if you like, mm -hmm. almost like the square cuts within to the mountain range originally. Mm -hmm. Let me pause. And the more real quick. ornate work as well. Let me pause real quick. I, we got to find that one. That's a great one to show. Okay, sorry about the break. I had to go pull this one up. This is really important, right? So, like Phil was saying, big square and rectangular cutouts, just plain, no ornamentation. Right into the bedrock, and look at how much is been you cleaned remember, back. Like we were saying, at Yang Shan at the back, how the big megalith is away from the actual quarry itself. 
Yeah. And then you could see the lines of the mineralogy where I explained before, it looked a bit like a quartz vein. Right. You've got that exactly the same here. Mm -hmm. It's exactly the same method. I think you're right. And with the square, well, rectangular niches cut directly into the stone. Mm -hmm. I mean, what was there originally? Yeah. I mean, it, it, it begs the question with the facade elements, are they later? You know, is this just a, a, an embellishment done to make the site a little bit prettier? Then maybe the, maybe the original purpose was more, you know, industrial again, more mining. Oh, and many, many like cargo courts have come through Petra. True. Right. Many, many, many ones that probably have been forgotten to time. But you're definitely here seeing different areas yeah. of build and also hallmark, aren't you? Agreed. And yeah, there's lots more angles. To you guys can find this one just by Google searching for the Petra Amphitheater to see all these different ones. We have more in the catalog, though. Um, let's go back here. And point out as well that there's over 280 amphitheaters, and we've started studying the main depth of. Quite a lot of them show base stone nubs as well, don't they? That's right. You know? yes. I mean, there's other things that are just big, odd objects. You know, again, like we saw at uh, Japan with Ichi no Hoden, it's just a giant cube almost, a uh, cube of stone that might still be connected to the bedrock. Yangshan, those big, yeah, yeah. those big blocks. These are called the Dijin blocks. D J I N N Dijin, like genies, the the Turkish word for or uh, you know. The uh, their regional word for genie, the djinn, yeah, yeah. djinn. So, what does that imply about these blocks if they are the djinn blocks made by the genies? Maybe you know, to me, it just says that something was kept inside, it really does. Yeah, and these doors, um, are not quite as ornate as the treasury doors for argument's sake. True, it's almost yeah. like you could roll a big stone across them and yeah. lock them off. If yeah. you were to keep something, maybe of high power or high value with inside it, less so the treasury with a door that is like twenty five times bigger than that, you know. Agreed. Yeah, I mean, I got I got a few angles of these, and you can see, yeah, they're they're pretty plain. Some of them have almost like a, like a stupa on top. The the it's hard. It to does look like that, doesn't it? Yeah, some of them have different shapes. You know, like this one is plain. Um, oh, sorry, double clicking again. The uh, the other ones have maybe faint traces of, of some kind of decoration. Like this one, you can see the triangles at the top. This might have been the start of that incised stair step motif like we saw at the other one. Absolutely. Episode. Right, yeah. Or was it was it far, far earlier and that one's been eroded? Eroded. Hey. Oh, maybe. Very because well could be. Because it's precursor to the elements yeah. very much out there. I like well, that. But you can definitely see the incised motif there. Wraps around. And, uh, Mm -hmm. Would they have hollowed that out as a complete sample? You don't know, do you? Yeah, good question. Or almost like they could have used that as their start block. They started the inside motif and didn't work inwards. Yeah. Back. Different ones like this one here are more embellished. They've got some kind of motif, temple facade motif going on with them. Like facade columns, right? The uh, engaged columns or partial columns that we see at like Hosan Suleiman and other places. And, and at Petra too, yeah. but yeah, other other areas of Petra as well. And then of course, I find it interesting that you see almost like the downward effect at the back, and then you've got mm -hmm. almost like the horizontal effect on the bedrock in front. Mm -hmm. It's almost like two different actions working together, which implies to me the underneath part there could have been exactly the same as the Yang Shanti. See where they tried to take it out at the bottom. Yeah, you know. These these it's marks the could be made that we see it. all over the world as well. It's in Zone X as well, so it was worldwide. Yeah, these marks could be made by the same tool, the same method, however you want to describe it. The the Absolutely. the groups doing one knew how to do the other. Yeah, that might even be a set of pinch holes there, Phil. I don't know. Those bit they look like pinch holes to me. Yeah. That's an upcoming again. We'd have to do your method of getting some sort of rubber pipe in or at least rope to go around some of them to see see if they can where they start where they finish what the tool marks are like within them because i mean i'll shout out to anybody that can get us up close and personal pinch hole photographs 
Right, yeah. Um, Andrew's doing an episode shout out, Andrew. Yeah, I might get that done soon. It might come out before this one. Who knows? We'll try to get that done soon. But that's a, a whole other can of worms, right? We'll figure that out soon. Yeah. And look at these marks. You see the striations, the saw marks, or however you want to describe them. And then at the top again, that faint trace of the stair step motif again. Is it just heavily eroded? Absolutely, yeah. Yeah, I see. You know, that, that's wild. So much more than, at Petra than just that treasury. Like Brian Forrester says, you know, the, these these ruins go on for a very long time. And then there's Little Petra, which is a whole other aspect. And then there's the subterranean elements, right? How many of you guys know that there are underground elements of Petra? So, which have actually shut off yeah. the public at the moment, but they do exist. Yeah, you guys are there. You see this, which guys? Makes me, and you know how much of a fan I am of certain levels. All this has the fencing over it and it's probably locked off can't go down there but that's right in front right did you guys know that that's under there how many people that know about the treasury know about any of this so and other aspects like 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 yeah you might know the, the pretty facade stuff on top but then yeah look at all these older more or at least more eroded simpler looking cavities below what is that about and there's tons and tons of evidence that looks like this Which has a striking similarity the further east you go like we discussed at the beginning of the video with the caves and they're very very yeah. similar aren't they yeah yeah these these caverns and, and cutouts and niches they start to blend together and look very very similar here's another I mean, slightly similar. further west in jordan from there the place called kafir al farid i do an episode on that and it's almost like a rock's been split in two, and they've done the hallmarks directly right. in front of it yeah. with the inverted inside motif. Yeah. I've done like drone footage that goes over the top, and it almost looks like one big, massive piece of bedrock has been split into two. That's right. Clear out three is a fantastic site. I don't have that specific block, but yes, I know what you're talking about. And yes, of course, they have these other crazy things. The reverse expression of that stair step motif again. And that Nabataean style, these are these are the engaged columns, facade columns, right. fake yeah, columns, it is, right? yeah, yeah. And then some more weird, weird. What are we calling it? Is this natural, or is, is this it natural, or was that originally some sort of facade, and then another one has been put into the right and to the left? Really, was it a pattern? Well, I mean, it's is that natural erosion? I'd love to hear. Dr. Robert Shock's opinion on Petra and the erosion. Yeah. That would be nice to hear to see whether that's natural or not. Agreed. These the Saudi Arabia spot and then some other spots in Jordan and Lebanon. Agreed. Yeah. Yeah, matter of fact, um well, we have lots of different places we could talk about. Um going off of Petra again, I wanted to bring up we have more of these holes, right? These these the, the, the niches and the caves. And then we could go back to Afghanistan. And you guys, I'm sure you've heard about the giant Buddha in Afghanistan. Well, it's not just the Buddha. Look at all these other pockmarked caves and caverns and niches around it. Indeed. So, I mean, the, exactly the, the, same. the same concept, the, these, these, cave like cliff dwelling peoples that weren't afraid of heights look how far some of this stuff goes and then of course their embellishment was amazing this is obviously after i don't know if everyone knows the story but there there were terrorists who destroyed blew up the buddha and that's why all that is left is the outline the niche completely obliterated Shock. it there's a video Shock. of it you can look for it if you want i'm not going to show it but you can see again all just peppered throughout these cliffs are all these tunnels and caves. So but I mean, if you were, I mean, if you were to literally clear your mind and then look at that with a slightly redder stone, you could take parts of it and say it's an earlier style of Petra. Yeah, it's a very the same early stuff. kind of build of Petra before the amphitheater, the treasury, the inside motifs were carved. Yeah. More of the cave dwelling aspect. Almost like Gravitian style cave dwelling, like a mining operation. That's a good to this point. Let me now that we're talking about those cultures and those things, let's go to Crimea real quick. I want to talk about Eski Kerman. 
because like you said this this stuff that they were able to do with the bedrock and this dwelling underground it gets pretty wild with what they were able to do and not many people know about these sites in the east they have things like cart ruts did you know about that absolutely yeah really it's very wild. reminiscent of Malta. agreed looks very okay everyone sorry for the break again we were just talking about how this is very reminiscent of malta we're, we're at in Crimea now, but these cart ruts and some of this block shaping and, and bedrock shaping is very reminiscent of Malta. So I would like to stop and we'll jump over to that for a second. First, I do want to point out, yes, this, this site does have more of this tunneling and, you know, bedrock work, even stairs carved in. That same style of incised doorways, right? Simple doorways with not much embellishment. So we'll jump over to Sardinia real quick. Sardinia is more of a, a cluster. I haven't really organized it too much further. And I apologize for that because this stuff is scattered all over the island, basically. But again, we have bedrock cuts, niches, and caves, caverns. Very simple designs, again. Not, not any kind of embellishment or any, any kind of uh, decorative or even inscriptions Almost saying who it was. Like a general mining system. Seems very industrial, right? Just, yeah, n nothing saying who was there or anything like that. Um, Not that all the other ones couldn't have been mapped, right. I believe, because down here, it's that's a wild it's block. The, it's the shape of it that mm -hmm. gets me that it's absolutely fantastic. But yeah, These... they all look as if they're mining for specific depth. The mineralogy is what stone they would have wanted. And these are crooked. You can't put this all down to housing. No, I mean, you can't put it all down to housing. That is not the case. No. How did this like happen? You can't. Right? You can't put it down to one area of the field or either. You know. Agreed. The way they're crooked like that, like have they, were they carved straight and then the the thing fell over, toppled over, and that's why some of them are crooked. I mean, some of these are just absolutely. They're yeah. They're so rough and just pushed in. Why are they like that? You know, there's no steps up to them. It's not very ornamented to, to like a funeral or a, a tomb burial. Doesn't seem like any of that. It would be more right. embellished. Some of them, like you say, housing, you know, you get block work up against some of the bedrock where maybe it could be. And then some of these other bigger ones, I think maybe they could have been hollowed out more in later times. That's something you got to think about too, right? And then, of course, some of these are really wild. I love this one. So you can see how crooked it is. Was it always this crooked? You know, is this how they carved it? I wonder. So that's just some, some things from, from Sardinia. Like I said, Malta as well has more of this with cart ruts. And then, of course, I mean, from there, hypogeum and underground. It almost like the Greek examples of the same thing, couldn't we? That's right, and yeah. You've got now from almost China to Japan, Far east, all the way across the New Road, Silk Road. There's another set of pinch holes, Phil. Look at that. That's a good one. Oh, wow. I'll have yeah, to save that one. Set of pinch holes. I'll put that another in. Another worldwide room. phenomenon that we found. You guys will see soon. Hopefully, I'll get that done soon. I'm working on it. Um, there's more cart ruts in Malta. I don't have pictures of those. You guys can look up the pictures of the cart ruts in Malta. Um, like you said, Greece. Before we get to Greece, I want to point out a couple more things real quick on the way to Greece. Iran. Now, Iran has more of this processing of the cliffside with these niches, right? Like we said, the incised. Yeah, yeah. And some of these with the uh, multiple incisements, the steps, that's very reminiscent of the Chinese ones and, and some of the Japanese ones. Yeah, definitely. Okay. And then, of course, with Behistun, one of the things I love to talk about, this cliffside has been machined back, everyone. This This is not natural. This has been artificially yeah, carved yeah. back. These are nubs and bits of material left over from the processing technique. You can see how big it is. And again, you can see the mineralogy change going vertically like you can at Yang Shan. Yeah, see the, the color changes? And if you don't believe us that, you know, it was worked, all you have to do is look close and you can see the scratch marks. See the nubs at the top? You can see the scratch marks, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's a zigzag pattern. You see that at Jerusalem, where, of course, Jerus Jerusalem, just like with uh, Athens Acropolis, that bedrock is like honeycombed with all kinds of 
tunnels and chambers. So that's amazing. that's really all I wanted to say about Behistun was just that there's there's more of it going on. You know, Iran more in that region. That I mean, that Iran over. seemed to me just kind of uh, very similar to Zone X, almost like the inverted triple header uh -huh. coming outwards. Yeah, yeah, the, the that triple headers, right? Yeah, and and the different uh, lintel designs mirror this this stuff. Yeah, good, good. Yeah, point. very similar. So we've got more of that going on at Behistun and other areas, like you mentioned earlier, the uh, Darius tombs and Kaaba Yizar Tosht, same area, right? Yeah. The the bedrock in the background that's been worked, and things that are sunken down in the ground. You know, is that the same time period, or was this later? Hard to say, but the, there is definitely the the machined precision. Almost got the T-shaped aspect as the well. The T-shape again. The incisors. Like two rectangulars as if they pushed in straight away. And maybe and more pinch holes. Look again. More pinch holes maybe too, right? I have this one. In, yeah, they're definite pinch holes as well. So we're in another area now. We're not in Malta anymore. We're, why are these pinch holes back? You know, you'll see more of this, guys. Trust me. I'll make a better compelling argument when we make that video. But. Yeah, just more of the of the bedrock processing. Again, like you were saying with Peru, this is very reminiscent of Peru. This just simple, machined, niche, or however you want to describe it, very similar to what they were doing in Peru. Yeah, it's surprising you haven't got like an ornate carbon in there, like yeah. you see probably uh, India or just three weird know, squares. Very much like the uh, cave systems that we see along the Silk Road. Yeah. But right. yet you have the ornate carvings within that, don't you? Right, yeah. So I mean, it's almost like the Zerastian work, too, without the Zerastian um, sort of chiseled out beautifulness within it. That's a good way to put it, right? You'll see the sides are still rough to show, you know, it's very Absolutely, similar to the yeah. other areas. Yeah. But then they just hit it with an, a finer level of detail in these other areas. Yeah. Well, you say hit it with a fine level of detail. It's got to be a refinement of technology at some point. Yeah. A I mean, when people are going to stop distinguishing copper chisels, sticks and stones to what would cut an actual bedrock mountain out crop. Let's talk We've about We've got Iran. to start thinking copper wouldn't cut that mineralogy of stone. It's impossible. I mean, look at this stuff. Are you kidding me, guys? Look how big this is. Look how, you know, look at all the different cutouts and flat surfaces. The weird holes again. We have another set like we saw in the last photo. Three square holes, three round holes. Interesting. Are these pinch holes of some kind again? I mean, they're almost like pinch holes as well, aren't they? Let's be honest. And I believe those are the only ones. Bleeding you well into your pinch hole video. This is on this. This is going to work out well. Yes. It so, is. So we've got basically the, the theme of this video is just big cuts and bedrock niches and. The, the the showy element of them the the, the way it's like a mining operation from what people call housing systems that span worldwide as well we thought we'd show this aspect yeah especially the day of Anoran the cave systems mm -hmm. span back to the gravity and area and beyond so I'm sure he'll appreciate or show in these Andrew. Yeah, I mean, you can clearly see the, the, the transition, right? You see more of the stepped header motifs. Iran now, we're more of the Zoroastrian territory, right? And But there's still, yeah. still caves, right? These are still the same kind of features like at Petra and other places. So we can move on from there. Maybe we can stop off in Jerusalem before we get to, to Greece. I thought maybe we could do, um, let's see, where are we? Israel... Do I have any good ones of the exterior? So we have, everyone knows about the big blocks around Jerusalem, but it's, it's the rock itself, right? It's the, the dome of the rock. It's the rock itself that is what is most holy. It's the giant bedrock that they first started on. They, you know, they have to prepare the bedrock and do all this underground work like we've seen with these big Absolutely. megaliths. LAH did a blocks. very good subterranean video. Yes, they did. On the bevel edge lines, mm -hmm. the uh, fitment of the stone where you can see how perfect they are. I mean, you've got a good image up there. Obviously. Right. So just subterranean elements at Jerusalem, 
and big blocks again, right? We're talking. I must say as well, it's taken away a little bit more external. There are actually nubs there. There are. Few and far between, but they're actually there. Like this one. Yeah. And then, like we were just saying at best on Iran, this is the thing I wanted to blow everyone's mind with. So those those scratch marks on the bedrock at Behistun, the exact same scratch marks on the stele at Jerusalem. Why is this holy? Maybe because of those marks, right? Yeah, and then, of course, indeed. right next to it, what do we have? We have a column with a nub on it. So, you know, column nubs are rare. Jerusalem, very holy site. Very important evidence being said right here. Like, just these two next to each other says so much. Yeah, it does. But, that, yeah, that's, you know, Jerusalem, dig more into some of the caverns and the, and the stuff they that's around Israel, the, the, the caves and the mining that, that I think it's important in as well while we're on our mission here is to mention Palmyra. Yeah. It was destroyed. Palmyra right. had inside no piece of fact Palmyra is industrially massive, just like what Baalbek was. Mm -hmm. uh, fantastic site, beautiful. Shame what's happened to it. It's important that we get as many old school photos of it and photos up to date of what's remaining. And keep it full time because Palmyra isn't the site that it was anymore due to obviously war conditions that we've had. Right. The, so, da uh, the damage holes, like I talked about in my previous episode, ton of those here, and they're not in existence anymore. We can't study them anymore. So. No. Right. And and then again, maybe we'll see more of the uh, the tunnels and caves in Syria and other places. Um, we're gonna move on to Greece because like we were talking about with Temple Mount, you know, the, the entire bedrock outcrop there has been worked and the Athens Acropolis yeah. is essentially the same way, isn't it? I mean this entire bedrock outcrop is riddled with holes and tunnels. So it is, yeah. So again we have multiple hallmarks on top of each other. We have the the mining aspect or the subterranean uh carvings and, and niches and tunnels. We have nubbed work, we have bevel block work. We have motifs, cultural motifs that overlap. So we can see a trail developing here, I think. I mean, who knows the direction? Yeah, it's not just but, one hallmark, is it, Andrew? You, no. you see from the cave systems then to the base stone nub system to then it moves up to the columns and then the more ornate work that we'll see at Greece's Acropolis and so on that me and you are fun about so much. Mm -hmm. It's almost like they were leaving markers to show not just different periods of time, but different working aspects, i.e. the mining aspect, the living aspect, mm -hmm. uh, the preaching or priesthood aspect, the sonic aspect. Right. So there was a lot of different areas. And it's important to remember that we could be missing a lot of different civilizations that are documented in between these sites. That's right. You know, I mean, a perfect example here, we were talked about in one of the previous episodes, these columns, all these column drum segments are being recycled in this wall. Originally, yeah. they, they were part of a structure, and these are huge, massive uh, pieces. Massive big, columns. Bigger than these. Be. They're not part of this. No, you can see the size difference. These are much smaller. They're all fluted. The ones in the wall here are unfluted. They have nubs on them. So it's like, wh what's the story of this and some of these other blocks? Do we have another what temple? Were, what was those columns actually to? Yeah. Where did they come from before they were repurposed? Good what question. was the original site there? Yeah. Because they're repurposed into that wall. Yes. That's visually there. It's physical evidence. There's no denying that. There you are. This is the screenshot I got. You can see the nubs on some of them. I mean, yeah. yeah there's nubs all over that part. Yeah. And is that a pinch, uh, pinch hole again? I wonder. Good. Could, That's for me, it's been shown all day long than the other ones we've seen, yeah. I mean, some of this stuff, it's weird how it just kind of echoes across. Might have a little base stone column up at the bottom right there as well. I see, ah, yeah, right, yeah, another one. And, like, they're partially buried, who knows, right? So, and then, is this all of the columns? Were there more? We have other things, you know, structures that are missing. I love this one that you found, Phil. You see the nubs at the bottom of this. This yeah. structure doesn't exist anymore. So what's going on here? What a shame. At least the bottom part is original. So what is yeah, this? Thing? A lot of good things, a lot of good overlaps here. I love these these epic shots of the 
Acropolis bedrock because you see all these little filled in areas where they've added in blocks and shored things up and made more. I mean, there's other areas where there's openings. You can get underneath the Acropolis. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the sub-levels there could be very, very important, couldn't they? Just like... Okay, yes, like Phil was saying, a lot of subterranean elements here. So I had to do a Google search because I don't have all of these saved. But yes, underneath the Acropolis, there are lots of caves, caverns, tunnels... So, the story of the Acropolis is a lot older, and there's a lot more going on beneath the surface, literally. And you Mining can, systems completely and utterly they are not documented. You can see some as much, but they look yeah, hard enough. You can see these say sort of niches and cutouts as we've seen and we've shown all over this episode. Agreed. We we've missed um. Cappadocia, I would like to go back real quick because whoop, there we go. Cappadocia again. Everyone knows about Darren Kuyu and the underground cities and everything, right? These, these are the same kind of cutouts again. We're talking about these same simple industrial looking niches and tunnels and, yeah. and some of these, you know, Big scoop marks and things out of them. Big square chunks taken out. I had a good one here. This one. Yeah. Just giant square cutouts. Some of them look like random for no reason. The incisements again around the doorways. It, it echoes. Makes you wonder how large that actually was before they've taken this a part. lot of material away. But they're almost yeah. like test holes in some... These up here, definite mining operation going on up there. Yeah, this this and whole. They side. had a long way to dig down and grab those twelve stories. Long way. Yeah, agreed. Just all kinds of crazy stuff. I mean, you can see where other elements were at one time. This was obviously a set of stairs. Absolutely. How, yeah. how it worked, I don't know. Is it stone stairs or was it wood stairs? Who knows? But all these other little notches and niches and rows of holes and. Different, different elements that are just very curious. Definitely a front to it, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, These big square open. I mean that that speaks of Petra again. A very big mm -hmm. open square blank. You know. So yeah, we're, we're we're going all around the world. We're seeing the same kinds of, you know, processing or mining or excavating. I mean, this stuff really does look similar. There's a little bit of cultural decoration on some of it, but if you can look past that, you, know, you can see the older, the simpler. And when you see them come underneath a lot of the more, what we consider or mainstream consider the most ancient sites in the world, mm -hmm. if you look below these sites, they're actually not. They were far earlier yeah. in habitation with what we're showing here. Agreed. With the mining, you know. And we could jump over to South America. That's probably a good place to wrap up today. In South America, there are even more of this. Look, Cajamarca, Peru, where the aqueducts, the very precise bedrock carved aqueducts are, we have more of these niches in the bedrock, in the cliffside. Simple, square niches, and some of them with the incisements again, right? The exact yeah. same stuff. Absolutely. I have more too. We'll, I have another angle that we need to show. Per, Peru. It's very handy having them all organized now by country. Cajamarca. Look at that. I mean, just. I mean, very, that's phenomenal, isn't it? Where's the decoration? It's all very simple. You know, again, like you saw in the previous site, these. Grooves above Sardinia had that too. These little, I mean, sometimes it's like I mean, an awning. places across the Silk Road. I mean, some of the Indian examples you get, yeah, you've got very ornate work, but you've also got some more sort of unornate work like this that's just almost like the column, a square niche, mm -hmm. and then they've worked on it maybe afterwards or whatever. But mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe. definitely the same sort of aspect, isn't it, working throughout the mountain? 
Yeah. So back to the point, was it a mining operation originally? Originally. And then it became a more ornate sort of working later on. That's what it feels yeah. like. Yeah, that feels like that was the prog progression. It started out very plain and and functional and, you know, for a purpose. Uh, that was Doesn't more like the bottom look like massive scoop marks as well on that photo. Cappadocia had yeah. those, yeah. These they're almost rounded, just big scoops, almost like an ice cream yeah. scoop has taken them out. Right. It does, yeah. Very much so. So very yeah. Much so. We've gone We've all the world right? today. We Andrew, have with <laughs> different hallmark than we usually speak about. Yeah, we didn't even really touch on nubs. This is just stuff that's adjacent to the nubs. It's sites that have nubs. You know, Kajamarch, hey. Kajamarka has uh, nubs in the bedrock aqueducts. So again, these things are adjacent to each other. We've talked about, uh, I talked about it on my previous episode. I know that you're big into this. We have designed what's called the Technological Alexandria, which is yeah. a hallmark catalog of the nubs spanning worldwide. But mm -hmm. we also are massive, massive advocates for all the hallmarks, which right. we are cataloging and putting onto a OneDrive system yeah, with all the yeah. best, most up to date pictures. Because you've got to remember that every day people are going to these sites, taking new photographs. Yes. Our team studies those new photographs. And we're going to put them into a catalog so it's easier for all researchers to find the specific hallmarks. Now, I'd like to invite personally any researcher out there mm -hmm. onto the show with Andrew and I to discuss hallmarks. Please feel free to contact us on YouTube on any of the comments section. Yep. Um, leave your comments below. We're happy to answer you as we do on all of our videos. But likewise to that, I'd like to point you across to where we research every day over at Twitter as mm -hmm. a team. Mm -hmm. and we look at all ancient mysteries and you're welcome to come and introduce yourselves to the team uh, we're there pretty much all the time 24 7. i say that because we're worldwide i've got Jeremy over in australia rob in america yourself in america i'm in england with dave hanneran we've got new members to the team like dan stevens over megalithicus we've got our good friend Guy who's in portugal so but to name a few of the team, we're worldwide, so it's um, great to have the team, but it'd be good to have you all across to come and chat to us about the hallmarks that we talk about. Yeah. And to add any impetus that you might have mm -hmm. and to show us what you've learned, and we'd be honoured to chat to you. So thanks very much indeed for watching, and thanks for your time, Andrew. Yeah, thanks. And, uh, it's a pleasure, mate, to research with you and do another video again. We'll be back again soon. Mm -hmm. And we'd like to bring on other researchers. Andrew and I have talked about this. We show you all the physical evidence that we find. We're quite happy to give our opinions. But we'd love to hear your opinions. Mm -hmm. Maybe this on the alternative view. I'd love to hear your ancient alternative view. And I'm sure Andrew would love to hear from you all as well. We're here uh, for the foreseeable future on the hallmarks and work on them daily. So thanks very much indeed for watching us. Yeah, that's the main thing is that if you guys think that we're not doing enough on YouTube and you want some more updates from us, I got a few comments recently saying, you know, put out more material. Well, sure, yeah, it takes a while to, you know, collate all the research into a video. So if you want to see the day-to-day -day interactions, please come over to Twitter. We're very active every day on Twitter and we can get through, you know, conversations a little bit easier. We have the photo sharing aspect too, so we can bring up photos with you and you can show us photos and, you know, make it a little bit more uh, involved than just a YouTube comment interaction. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Thanks very much for uh, coming and watching us again. Yep. I hope you've enjoyed the documentary that we've put out for you today. Yeah, guys. So all the very best. Yep. Thank you, Andrew. We will see you guys soon in the next one. Look forward to my video on the pinch holes coming up soon, maybe before this one comes out, who knows. Um, that one's going to shed a lot of light onto another facet, another hallmark. We haven't looked at it, but it is adjacent to these other hallmarks, and it might even be caused by the same tech or method that is causing the nubs. But we'll get into that deeper. So, Thank you guys again for hanging out with us, and we will talk to you next time.